Peggy Whitson, Chief of the Astronaut Office. Peggy, uh, 12 years ago today, the Zvezda service module was launched from a launch pad several miles from where we're standing at this moment. That uh, began the most serious aspect of the assembly of the space station. In a few days, launch of the next crew to perpetuate the work up there. Uh, your thoughts on how far we've come over the past 12 years from service module launch to the upcoming launch of Sunny and Aki and Yuri? Well, it's actually huge. Uh, the uh, number of accomplishments that have occurred over that time frame. Building the structure of the International Space Station is hard to even describe and understand, but you know, to have so many modules the size of uh, school buses connected together on orbit and truss assemblies longer than a football field and solar arrays 239 feet each of, and 
four pair. It's just an amazing feat that all of this has been constructed on orbit. And now, now that we have all these laboratories up there, we're, we're continuing the next phase of, of exploration with scientific exploration, looking at various different phys, uh, physical and biological sciences uh, on board the International Space Station. Sunny and Aki, uh, final days before launch. Uh, how are they doing? What's their level of preparation and their level of, uh, shall we say, uh, ready to get on with this flight? Oh, they're absolutely ready. They're very gung-ho. This crew is a very special crew, very outgoing and gregarious crew. And I think folks on the ground will have fun watching them in addition to them having fun on orbit. Uh, they've got a fantastically busy mission ahead of them. They are looking toward nine visiting vehicles during the time that they're up on board the space station, which is really a lot of, of coming and going. And uh, it's going to take a lot of choreography by the ground teams and the, the crews on orbit to make this all happen. And it'll be a very challenging and exciting time for them. Speaking of that, in a little more specificity, in a six-week period after docking, there are nine visiting vehicle dockings, undockings, redockings, two spacewalks, all in that time frame. Un almost unprecedented volume of activity. How are they going to handle all that? Well, it'll it'll require a lot of choreography to get it all handled. And I think that our teams on the ground have a plan, and and I know our crews are ready to implement on orbit. And Peggy, one final question. Two months ago, we were back here for Joe Acaba's launch. Two months later, another Soyuz vehicle behind you, ready to be uh, hoisted vertically for launch on Sunday. Uh, an almost amazing piece of activity here in Baikonur as well. Yeah, it has been. I was here two weeks ago for uh, a landing for Don Pettit and Andre Kuiper's landing. Uh, and so it's it's just been uh, a lot of activity going on here in, in uh, Kazakhstan as well as all over the world and all the control centers that participate in the International Space Station. So it's, it's an exciting time. Janet Cavandi, Director of Flight Crew Operations at the Johnson Space Center. Janet, scarcely two months after Joe Acaba launched to the International Space Station, another Soyuz on the pad behind you. Sonny Williams and Aki Hoshide, along with Yuri Malenchenko, ready to go on Sunday. Uh, what is your, your, your thoughts on their level of preparedness for launch and the busy time that lies ahead? Well, of course, we have a, a pretty uh, accomplished crew. They're, they're very ready to go. They've been, been, most of them been there before, so this won't be anything new for these guys. Uh, so they're very anxious, you know, ready to, ready to go. They know there's a lot of work up there to be done. Uh, it's not a place you can just kick back and relax. You know, there's so much science to be done. There's a lot of payload operations up there that they have to be working on when they get there. There's a, a lot of stuff that needs to be maintained all the time on space station. So, you know, they're ready for it, and they're in a good mood and ready to go. <laughs> in the particular case of this crew, they hit the ground running literally at the moment of hatch opening. Right. From the time of launch until uh, the beginning of August, nine visiting vehicle operations, dockings, undockings, redockings, plus two EVAs at the end of August, all this within about a six-week period. How can the crew bite off this much right off the bat? Well, that's why we pick such good people, right, for these things. You know, we, we interview a lot of people. You know that we've you know, gone through over 6,000 applications so far for the next selection. So we try to pick the best possible people we can who are very enthusiastic and, and energetic and really know when a big job has to be done, they're ready for it. So these guys prepare for, of course, years uh, in advance of a launch. They know what to expect. They know they're going to have a lot to be doing. And, and it's just a mental mindset. You have to be be prepared mentally you have to know that you're going to hit the ground running you don't have time to sit and really reflect on where you are and these guys like I said are professionals and done this before so uh, they know what they're up against they know how to you know work their time and their rest so that they're always prepared and ready to go for everything that they're they're expecting we're coming up on 12 years of permanent human occupancy of the International Space Station uh, from a few fledgling modules to the uh, city in the sky that it is today. Uh, what are your thoughts? You've been, you went to the Mir Space Station, you went to the International Space Station during assembly. Uh, your thoughts on, on where it has come from in the past decade and two years? Yeah, it's, it's actually just quite incredible. I mean, just from my first experience seeing Mir, 
and what an incredible space station that was, then to be able to go back and go to the International Space Station during its construction phase and um, wishing so much that you could share in person what it feels like to approach a space station and how huge it has become and how complex it is and what a tribute to human humanity that we've been able to construct something so large and complex in space in a cooperative manner the way we have is just really impressive and a tribute to, to our race, I think. It's just, just an incredible accomplishment. So it's humbling. Uh, you're very proud to be part of it. And, you know, like I said, the crews are, are up there ready to do what needs to be done and, and very happy to be a part of it.